Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last couple of tutorials, we talked about DFT, which is discrete Fourier transform. And in this tutorial, I'm going to provide a quick introduction to DCT, which is discrete cosine trans transform. So DFT converts your image from a real space, which means from X and Y coordinate system to a frequency domain. And DCT, discrete cosine transform, does exactly the same. Okay, it transforms image from one space to the other space. Now, what is the difference then? Now, DFT uses a set of complex exponential functions and DCT uses only real valued cosine functions. That's the only difference, okay? So DFT, discrete Fourier transform, is a complex exponential functions, okay? In this case, DCT is a straightforward real valued cosine functions, meaning your information is uh, broken down into a series of cosine functions with varying coefficients, okay? Now, DCT, uh, in case you wonder, is used in data compression applications such as JPEG, and that is because DCT representation of your image or of your information is concentrated, most of the information is concentrated in a very small number of coefficients, okay? So, uh, which means, of course, this is very useful for data compression because now you can approximate your original image or original information in only a relatively small set of DCT coefficients, right? So this is the primary difference between DFT and DCT. And because DCT contains most of the information in a, in, in, uh, a small subset of these coefficients, it's uh, highly desired in the compression type of algorithms. Now, for this tutorial, let's actually do something fun. Let's perform denoising by averaging an image stack. As you probably know, if you have a stack of images with some random noise in each image, then by averaging it, you can reduce the noise and you can get clean images. Now, you can do that in real space, obviously, by taking each image and averaging it. But we are also, at the same time, going to do that in the DCT space, discrete cosine transform space. By the way, you can repeat this exercise on DFT space. The result will look very similar, okay? So we are going to convert each noisy image into DCT space, and we are going to average all the DCT images and convert that averaged image back to the real space. And then we are gonna do the same with the real images and see how the outputs compare. Spoiler alert. DCT, just like DFT, is linear, which means you shouldn't see much of a difference whether you work on the real space or DCT space, unless you start manipulating things in DCT space and converting back to real space, just like we did in the previous tutorial, okay? So let's jump into Spider IDE to code this. And I've already written parts of the code, so let me go ahead and copy uh, chunks at a time so I can explain it. So first of all, the headers, yeah? We always start by importing the write library, so I'm going to import the pi plot, I'm going to import CV2 so I can read images and numpy, so we can manipulate numbers, and the DCT and inverse discrete cosine transform are both available as part of FFT pack in SciPy package, okay? So this is how we are going to import them, and now my images are located in a directory called 25 sigma, and I have about 10 images, and if I open the first image you can see that this is indeed a relatively noisy image so there is some noise right there and let's actually average all the images to hopefully denoise these now how do we read a whole bunch of images well uh, there are many ways to read in images and for now let's actually use list directory so i am assigning a variable called image directory and then obviously to define my uh, directory there and the next step is to load the images, okay? So let's load images one at a time. So right there, so we are going to load the images, okay? So for F in file name, so it's going to actually go through each file within that folder. And we are going to use cv2.imre to read these. And I'm reading each image as a grayscale image. And I'm reading each image as float 32. So for any of these operations, whether it is DFT or DCT, uh, they like to work with floating point 32 numbers, okay? That's the reason I'm converting them into floating point 32. Now, the next thing is uh, we need to average these images, right? So to average the images, first of all, let's define 
placeholders to actually dump our numbers, the averaged numbers into. So I'm going to define a couple of placeholder uh, placeholder arrays. So first of all, I'm, I'm reading the images and I'm extracting what the height and width of these images are. Okay, so first let's actually run the code until this point. Okay, so you can see what I'm looking at here. So my images have uh, a height of 714 and width of 901. So my height here is 714, width is 901. Okay, and then I'm creating empty. So let's actually run this part of the code average image, AVG image up there. As you can see, I'm creating two empty arrays, NumPy arrays of float32 type, yeah, of float32 type. And the size of this array is 714 by 901, and they're filled with a bunch of zeros for now, okay? Later on, we'll fill them with our average values. And now we just need to calculate, read each image, and at every pixel, we have to get the average, yeah? We have to... The way you can do that is for, let me create a bit more room so you can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so for I in range length of images, meaning for ten, each image uh, in my uh, out of my 10 images, okay, my average image is a weighted average, again in uh, CV2 or OpenCV, there is a function called add weighted, okay? We are actually uh, averaging the image and we are weighting it. Again, do the math on paper. This absolutely makes sense if you do the math, okay? So this is just a weighted average and I'm dumping all of those values as we are going through each image into an array called average image, which we just created with uh, with a bunch of zeros, okay? I'm doing exactly the same with my DCT, except for instead of original images, I'm actually dumping the values of DCT of original images. So it's actually performing DCT, discrete cosine transformation of each image and at every pixel performing average and dumping that into this, into this uh, uh, array. That's all it is. Okay. Now that we have our averaged DCT, let's actually get our original image back. Okay. How do we get our original image back? As you can imagine, inverse DCT. So we are going to just do I DCT of our DCT averaged image. That's it. Okay. So once we have this, we just need to go ahead and have a look at these images. That's it. That's as simple. Now we may as well save these images. So I have written a few lines to save the images and also to look at these images on the screen. So these two lines, obviously I'm saving them by giving some appropriate uh, names. And down here, we are, we are going to uh, visualize these images on screen. So let me go ahead and run this entire code. And on the right hand side, we should see four images. The first two are the first two images, uh, you know, so image number one and image number two, okay? And the bottom two on the left hand side, average of images. So this is an image that we obtained by averaging all the images, yeah, in the image domain. And on the right hand side is the image that we obtained by averaging all the images in the DCT domain and then retrieving it back as uh, original image, okay? I hope I'm not convinced, uh, c confusing you guys here, okay? Uh, it's As you can see, they both look very similar. In fact, if I go and uh, where am I saving them? Looks like I'm saving them here. Averaged image and DCT image, they should look pretty much the same. In fact, the number should also be, ident well, not identical, but uh, comparable. So let's actually look at these two images by putting them side by side. What is the best way? I think this is the best way to put these images side by side. Okay, there you go. So don't they look identical? The one on the left is obtained by averaging pixel values of all the 10 images, okay, at a given pixel. And the one on the right hand side is by averaging all the DCT images and retrieving the image back. They should look identical, okay? Uh, in fact, uh, a fun exercise in case you are curious, go ahead and look at the average image numbers here. They are supposed to be floating point. And also look at where is our reverse image right there. Look at these numbers. Of course, they are not identical, but if you look at the scaling factor here, okay? divide 65412 by 36.3 and then take that scaling factor and you should get other numbers back. In fact, if you want me to do this, uh, let's actually go ahead and do this exercise here, okay? So what is it? Uh, uh, 65412, 65412 
36.6 divided by 36.3. 36.3 is 1802. So what do we get if we multiply 40.8? 40.8 multiplied by 1802, we get 73521.5999, which is 6, right there, 73521.6. As you can see, these two are identical except for the scaling factor of 1802. So what have we proven here? What did we prove here? Well, you can do any math in the real space, convert it into, or you can do any operations in this real space, like for example, in this case, averaging, and then convert them to DCT, you know, uh, and then do the average and retrieve it back. It's pretty much the same information. Now, the fun lies when you actually take this DCT converted image and apply some sort of a nonlinear uh, type of uh, application. For example, blocking all the, uh, for example, uh, low frequency components and only letting the high frequency components. Yeah. I let you do that exercise because I've done that in the previous tutorial. So do exactly the same thing using the DCT and see if you can learn something from this. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention. And if you like these type of content and this type of tutorials, please, of course, subscribe to my channel and like this tutorial on YouTube. It always encourages me whenever I see your likes and subscriptions. So thank you very much for your attention. And in the next tutorial, let's cover a different image processing topic.